What's up YouTube? It's Pokey Professor Will here and today I'm going to show you how to vinyl wrap your inline skate frames. So uh, yesterday I did a set uh, on the X2s here uh, for my uh, Neo Duels. Uh, these are not the original frames but uh, anyways I did those and today I'm going to do the Endless Arc CS. So I have the uh, Endless Arc CS frames in frost blue, which is a beautiful color. Uh, I really love this color, but uh, this vinyl wrap thing is uh, really cool to me. So uh, here is one of the Arc CS frames already finished. Uh, I've already wrapped this one, and I'm gonna show you today how to wrap uh, one side of this frame, or my method anyways. Uh, so, things that you're going to need, uh, something to cut on, right? Uh, you don't want to scratch your table up. Here is an imprint uh, of the Endless Arc CS frame. I went ahead and placed this vinyl wrap on the Arc CS frame and then tore it off just to make sure that it wasn't going to like damage the uh, paint or anything. It did not at all, so no worries there. Um, but anyways, other things that you're going to need, uh, vinyl wrap, obviously. I got this one from uh, Tech Wrap on Amazon. I'll leave the, a link to the, uh, to the product in the description below. Uh, but this is the opal white color. Uh, that's the one that I went with. Uh, scissors to cut your uh, vinyl wrap. Uh, I went ahead and cut some strips out to wrap the frames today. Uh, what else do we need? We need a little squeegee, so a credit card would work. I have a little squeegee, plastic squeegee. I don't know when I got this. I got this a long time ago. Uh, but I wrapped it in duct tape just to be a little bit softer on the vinyl. Um, an X-Acto knife to cut out the vinyl. And something else that I uh, did not use on these, but I am using on the endless frames because these are a little bit smoother is uh, this window applicator solution. So I made this just using some distilled water and about a teaspoon, like five milliliters of uh, baby shampoo. Um, but I've used this before uh, to apply film things. So uh, there's my dogs going crazy. My wife is home. Um, yeah, that's about it. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so the first step, I'm going to go ahead and apply some of this window applicator. Well, obviously, I, I've cleaned to the frames first, right? You want to clean the frames. So I'm just going to dab this on. Whoop, right, we got a strip right here. All right. <laughs> I waited to do this video. Uh, my neighbor was mowing just a second ago, so I went ahead and wrapped the other frame before I started this video. Oh, pain. Oh. Sometimes this is easy and sometimes this is not. I have the little corner there. Come on, work with me. I clip my fingernails. There we go. All right, finally. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna dab on the window applicator solution. Just get it a little bit damp. Now, I'm gonna fold this into a U, into kind of like a long U, and place that bottom of the U onto the frame. And then from here, I'm going to kind of spread with my fingers the top part of the frame. Okay. Okay. And now I'm going to try to get that crease on the bottom part of my frame. Okay. 
So depending on the frame that you have, you know, this could be uh, more or less difficult. I find that the endless frames, they're easier to cut out than uh, these X2 frames. But as far as like uh, air bubbles and stuff, the endless frames are a lot more prone to that. With these, I didn't even use the uh, window applicator solution. Um, and I don't see any air bubbles at all. So, um, but again, it's just the finish on the frame is the difference there. All right. All right. Press that on. Now I'm gonna get some more window applicator. Uh, if you have a spray bottle, that would probably work better. My, uh, this used to be a spray bottle, but the sprayer is not working. So and I didn't really wanna run down to the dollar store. I just wanted to get started with the video. So now I'm gonna smooth out with the spatula. Again, you could use a credit card or something else for this. You don't necessarily have to have a spatula, right? But I'm hoping to push out any air bubbles, also to press the vinyl onto the frame. I'm not like a professional vinyl wrapper person at all. I think this is the first things that I've actually vinyl wrapped, really. I've done stuff like this before, though, like window uh, car tent is a very similar process, right? I want to get a wrap for my car, but this is too damn expensive, man. <laughs> I think that would look really cool, though. There's a guy uh, that drives a, uh, what are they called? The Hellcat chargers. Um, and he works at the little dollar store, I guess, down the street, because that's where his car's always at. Um, and it's pretty similar to this color. This is this opal white, really pearlescent color. Um, and it's really pretty. Okay, so uh, we have pressed the vinyl onto the frame. Now I'm gonna cut out the vinyl. And I found through you know, some experience that you want to get this relatively close, like within a millimeter or two. Um, it helps down the road whenever you're uh, doing the fine cutting. So right now we're doing the coarse cutting and we're just cutting really close to the frame. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna finish these and then take them out later today to the skate rink and see how they look with all the lights. These, uh, this vinyl wrap's quite reflective. And with the company that I, this tech wrap company, I was looking online, they have all sorts of different options. Um, this is one of their uh, chrome uh, opal uh, colors. Uh, they have several different colors in this line, but they have like a uh, metallic prints. Oops, I got a little something happened there. I think we'll be fine. Um, they have uh, color changing ones, like they have uh, vinyl wraps that will change colors upon a temperature change, uh, photosensitive ones, so like a uh, UV light uh, will stimulate a color change. For some of the wraps. I thought that was quite interesting. Honestly, I saw those after I got this, but uh, I don't know. This, this, uh, I, I'm really satisfied with the, the turnout of this uh, finish, this specific opal white. Something else, you want to make sure that your X-Acto knife is sharp. So the one that I'm using specifically is just a regular X-Acto knife uh, number one. But the blade that I'm using is the zirconium tipped uh, Z11. So uh, I don't really use X Acto knives much. I went and bought one specifically for this project. Um, huh. Something was going on there. Oh, I, I already cut around there. That's why. I was like, the hell is going on? I already, already made it back around. Okay, cool. That makes sense now. <laughs> All right. I think we're loose. Mm -hmm. 
Bam. Cool. Trash. Now we will do the fine cutting. So basically, I'm just going to kind of cut this at a, you know, 45 degree, at uh, some angle. Um, be very careful not to cut your hands. Uh, this is where having a really sharp X-Acto knife uh, is going to be advantageous over a dull one, for sure. So, there's that. Let's see, I'll get this little corner piece at the end, I think. I know you're not supposed to cut towards yourself. I was a Boy Scout once. I'll get that edge here in a second. The little uh, rounded parts are a little tricky. Not that bad. There we go. Got that piece. There we go. Alright, I need to get inside. There's a little plastic uh, top layer on this, so if you don't go through both layers, it can feel kind of weird. But we're rocking and rolling. So far, so good. I have to clean up that little part right there. These little things get everywhere, by the way. So be prepared to clean up your mess afterwards. <laughs> okay, careful right here. Don't want to cut myself. Okay. I missed a little part right there. <laughs> it's quite obvious where you have cut and where you have not if you uh, do this well. And like I said, I'm not I'm not an artist or anything. I don't have much experience with this. It's not that hard, I don't think. We're just kind of cleaning up the little, you'll see like little white pieces here and there and you can just kind of clean them up. Like right here, I see. There we go. Now with the endless frames, it doesn't seem like any of the paint is coming off at all with my X-Acto knife, uh, kind of gently scraping the corner. With the X2s, eh, a little bit of the paint was coming off, but I don't think like a whole lot to where you're going to have like a whole silver ring around your frame if you decide to take them off. I'm not sure. I haven't taken them off yet, but there wasn't much coming off. But I did notice some. <laughs> All right. Nice. Got that round. Okay. Let's finish the top part here. We kind of started on the top. It's just one loop. You don't have to start. You start wherever you want, end wherever you want. Depending on the frame, might be easier to start somewhere than somewhere else. I don't know. <laughs> All right, cool. For me, I, I mean, I like to have uh, really unique things and uh, doing this to the frame, it's a, it's a fun little project. This did not cost much at all. Uh, the vinyl wrap, I got a one foot by five foot roll for $12 or so, it was like 10 to $12 off of Amazon. And the X-Acto knife cost me $4.50 from Walmart. I can't remember how much the blades cost. They might have been like eight bucks or something, but uh, 
Yeah, total 20, 25 bucks. You could probably get thrifty with the shopping and get get it a lot cheaper. And the vinyl wrap is removable. If you ever want to change the color, you can just rip this right off and do this again with a different film. So, uh, not to do a pun here since I'm on the endless frames, but endless possibilities, right? <laughs> uh -huh -huh -huh. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's see. Oops. Little. Let's see. That little thin strip right there. And then this little part right here, which is not as hard as you think. All right, let me double check, see if there's any little, if I see any white, then I will shave that area. Okay. Like I said, the corners, this is always a little round. There we go. One little piece right there. Okay, one little piece right there. There we go. Okay, cool. All right, I'm satisfied with that. I see a couple little air bubbles. What you can do is you can puff those out. Uh, you want as uh, little of those as possible in the end if you want it to look the best. Okay, cool. Now we can cut out the uh, little holes. So. We got five holes to cut out, two different types of holes. These ones are quite easy. Bam. If you notice, I am right handed. Uh, if you've watched my YouTube videos, I uh, spin clockwise, which uh, clockwise spinners are typically left handed. Um, so most people, their natural spin direction is counterclockwise because most people are right-handed. Um, I don't know why I spin clockwise. It just feels more natural to me for whatever reason. But a little fun fact while we're cutting the holes out here. Cool. Okay. All right, there's those three, which are the easier type here. And now I have the two end for the rockerable axles. Just a little bit there. Okay, there we go. All right, that wasn't too hard, was it? I'm kind of cheating because I'm doing the easier side here. <laughs> I'll show you what I'm in here in a second. We're almost done with this side. This one didn't really cooperate as well as the other. go okay cool all right all good looks good to me okay 
Okay. Another thing, uh, I label my frames. That's a little tip. I don't know if you want to keep them. Uh, because once you cover these, with the endless, they're symmetrical. So the left frame, you could switch it off for the right and vice versa. With the X2s, for example, this one is the left frame. It's meant to be on the left skate, and the other frame is meant to be on the right skate. So you can label with a little Sharpie on the top uh, because your markings will now be covered here, right? Um, yeah, there we go. We'll take off the little plastic sheet. Now you will be able to see if you have any air bubbles a lot better. Uh, and for me, I really don't have many. I have like two little bitty ones right there. And for me, I'm just gonna cheat and do a little tiny poke. All right. But uh, good enough for me. Cool, okay, so uh, we'll come back uh, once these are completely assembled. Uh, so, be back. All right, you two, we're back. Uh, and before we left, I mentioned that I was cheating uh, because I was doing the easier side of the frame. Uh, all I was referring to was the axle slots on the bottom. One side is easier than the other side, but I forgot to show you guys uh, before I cut the video out. Um, but we are all finished. Boom, look at that. So I got these installed on my white uh, FR1s. So I'm gonna take them out for a stroll at the skating rink uh, later today. Uh, but I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions at all about the process, let me know in the comments. Uh, other than that, uh, thanks for watching this episode of Pimp My Skates. <laughs> so cheers guys, we'll see you guys later, bye.